everyone, before you watch this video, make sure you've seen part 1, the link will be in the description, I am absolutely flabbergasted that I got this done in only a week and a couple days, it was hell, so don't expect it from me, I'll stick to uploading once every 2 weeks otherwise I'll hate this so much I'll have to quit. Any gays, hope you enjoy the video. Over the final week leading up to White Day, Bakugo had been organizing his secret chocolate notes almost like an investigation board, racking his brain to figure out who his anonymous Valentine was. The more he read, the more it pointed toward his freckled childhood friend, if you could even call him that, which was what made the theory so ridiculous, no matter how many notes pointed toward Isuko, he just could not accept it. You've grown so much in just a few years. A few years, we've only been at UA for a little over a year, so it would have to be him, but maybe it's not and they just weren't thinking so clearly, they just feel like they've known me for years, I could listen to your voice forever, it's super hot, ahem. There's no way that's Deku, he wouldn't say something so straightforward like that, though it is anonymously, no, it cannot be Isuku. I'm not so full of myself that I think the guy I bullied our whole lives could possibly fall for me. It went on and on like this for days, but despite how hard he fought the evidence, it all pointed to Isuku, and nobody else. When it hit the day before White Day and as he woke up to eat the second to last chocolate, he was at his wit's end, ready to give up on figuring out who they were from. I think I've been in love with you since we were kids. Huh. Kids, since we were kids? I can't, there's no way to argue this one. It is Isuku, they're all from Isuku, he muttered frantically to himself as realization sank in. And he could feel his face heating up as his heart raced in his chest. He looked back to his board covered in a month's worth of anonymous compliments, scanning over each one finally knowing who wrote them. He thinks I'm funny, and wants me to hold him, I wanna hold him, fuck I wanna kiss him. His mind flashed back to when they were lying side by side on the grass, and how soft Izuka's lips looked, he wanted to kiss him so bad. This dumb holiday? If he just told me he felt this way years ago we could've done something already. Why did he wait for fucking Valentine's Day, and then do it anonymously? Now I finally figured it out I can't even tell him I like him back until tomorrow? I guess I could say it today, but he went through all this trouble, and there's one more chocolate for tomorrow. Sigh, dumbass, why do I care about following the rules of a tradition I don't give a shit about? Just because he does? I'm really down that bad? He buried his face in his hands and flopped back onto his bed, trying to get a grasp on all the emotions he was feeling. I've gotta make it through a whole day in class, knowing that he feels this way, and thinks all these things about me, but he can't know I know. Fuck. Hey Bakugo? Eh, uh, uh, hi? Whoa why are you being weird? I'm not I just wasn't expecting conversation the second I stepped foot into the classroom. Morning Kachan? He whipped his head toward the cheery voice and his lips instinctively pulled up in the corners, until he cleared his throat and looked away. Why is everyone talking to me? You know I'm not a morning person. Sorry for saying hi to my best friend. He scoffed and mocked Kiri's voice as he trudged toward his desk, subconsciously scanning Deku's soft features as he got his books and pens out. Holy fuck he's so pretty. Did he get ten times prettier after I realized he said all those things about me? Are you okay Kachan? No, yes? What? Um, I'm, uh, tired. He blinked as his body froze in panic before rapidly turning and sitting at his desk, praying that he wasn't actually being as awkward as it felt in his mind. Something is definitely up with him. Totally. Morning class, your tasks today involve paired work again, uh, you can choose whoever this time though, don't worry about them being near you. Hanta, join me? Of course. Wa well, wait, if you're with Icy Hot then. Uh, Bakugo, dude, I love you but you cannot cock block me right now. Cha whatever, fuck you guys anyway. Um, we could work together again Kachan. Bakugo's head turned so fast he almost gave himself whiplash, and as he looked into Deka's hopeful eyes gleaming over his shy rosy cheeks, he lost the ability to speak. I uh, I mean, you know, uh, unless you wanted to work with someone else, that's fine. No, fuck, sorry, I wanna be your partner, for class. Yeah, is everyone paired? Yes, okay. Today is all about trust. You must trust your partner to have your back and never lead you astray. Follow me to the training grounds. Trust? I'm even more fucked than last week oh god. Hey Kachan, I think we'll do pretty good with this right? I mean, I know I trust you. You you do? Of course? 
I know it might be silly since you consider me your rival and would probably do almost anything to beat me at whatever is thrown our way, but I still like to believe you would never want to bring real harm my way, right? Well duh, how am I supposed to beat you if you're dead huh? Exactly, so I trust you completely. Bakugo could feel himself blushing as they walked together to the training grounds, mentally adding unwavering trust to the list of things he now knew Deku felt for him. So, do you trust me? Huh, um, I guess so. You guess? Well I dunno. Sure, yeah I trust you, whatever. Hmm, alright. In your pairs, each of you are to choose either number one or two. Which do you wanna be babe? But babe? Oops sorry I'm a day early aren't I? I I don't mind which number. Well since you're my number one how about we go with that? God you're so grossly obsessed. I'll be one, is that alright? Sure, I don't mind. Um, Kachan. What? This isn't even a discussion obviously I'm number one. Oh, of course. Yeesh these boys make it such an ordeal right? Right? So I'll be number two? What? No, I'm number two. But I said it first. But being number one just doesn't feel like me. And she said boys make it an ordeal. Has everyone chosen their numbers? Yeah yeah I'll be number one. He he love you bestie. Number ones please come to me and I will hand you a blindfold. Huh? Once you are blindfolded your partner will guide you through a series of tasks and obstacles, you have to trust them to be your eyes. That's bullshit. Oi Deku switch numbers with me? That's not allowed, doing it this way was intentional, those of you who chose number one are more likely to be strong leaders who struggle to rely on others, this exercise will help. Ugh, fine, you're not wrong I guess. He huffed but took the blindfold anyway, storming off toward the building Aizawa assigned to him and Izuku. We got this right Kachan? You said you trusted me? Obviously we got this, as long as you know how to give clear instructions. Well um, you don't usually like to follow instructions, are you going to be alright? Are you saying I'm going to ruin this for us? No, I'm just reminding you that you'll have to follow my orders? Right, then just give good orders. They reached the building and paused to read the instructions by the door. Number one will put the blindfold on before entering the building. Number two will go ahead to the other end of the floor and use these communication devices to feed instructions to their partner while watching the building's security cameras, hey this sounds fun. Speak for yourself. You get to control me like some sort of video game? Yeah but that makes you the action hero, right? Hmm, I guess. Yay? So um, I'll go in now okay? Do you want me to help putting the blindfold on? Nah I got it, just go in, don't forget the earpiece dumbass. Oh, right. Okay, talk in a bit. Deku slipped through the door and Bakugo sighed, grabbing his earpiece and putting it in, before reluctantly putting the blindfold over his eyes and tying it tight. Hey nerd, you there yet? Just made it to the cameras, over. Over? You say that at the end of talking like this, over. Oh my god, that's with walkie talkies? There's no one way communication with earpieces? Oh yeah, sorry, I'm getting a little too into this whole action spy thing. Why do I suddenly find his stupidity cute? Ahem, are you ready? Yup, I can go inside now? Um hmm, oh but when you get inside stop right away, don't step forward cause there's a big hole in the floor. What? The floor is just gone? Yeah but it's fine I can guide you across it? Shit, alright. He took a deep breath before heading inside, stopping immediately and clenching his fists by his sides nervously. Oh hey I see you now, alright so you need to move to your left a little and step forward. But you said there was a hole in front of me? Yeah but to the left there's a little platform. How little? What if I miss? Well I think even if you miss the hole isn't deep you'll just fall a little, they wouldn't hurt us Kachan. But what if there's something down there you can't see? Then you take the blindfold off. There's no need to be scared Kachan this is just a fun little trust exercise. I'm not scared. Kachan you have to trust me. You said you did. I, I do. I just. Hey remember when we had to fight Mr. Smiley? That villain that made us laugh if we saw his face? Yeah, you had to wear a blindfold then right? And Endeavor told you what to do? Right. So if you could trust him then, in a real dangerous situation, why can't you trust me now? It's not your fault, I'm just on edge today, so not being able to see is making me not trust anything at all, I'm freaking out and it's pathetic. Hmm. You're not pathetic Ka-chan, you're one of the bravest and strongest people I know. Cha, one of? Second only to All Might. Yeesh alright guess I can't argue with that one. Seriously though, this is super unexpected. I never see you worrying about anything, 
It's kinda cute. Huh? What did you just say? Nothing? It must be the earpieces bugging you know? I'm not letting you get away with that. Oh yeah? Best come get me then huh? Cha, I see what you're doing. It's working. A little to the left and step forward right? Yup, you got this. Bakugo followed Deku's instructions, step by step across the crumbling floorboards, ducking under beams and jumping over gaps until he was almost at the end. You're doing so good Kachan? I can probably see you without the cameras now hang on. Wait where are you going? To watch you do the last part in person? Woo I see you. Okay so just turn to your right a little and hop over a little gap, then it's just a straight forward walk to the end, to the right, and, hop, I'm over the gap, so just, forwards? Before Deko could respond Bakugo was running forward in excitement, so caught up in finally getting this stupid task over and done with, that he was too slow to realize Deko's panicked yell. Whoa, oof, he crashed right into something and fell to the ground, rolling until he was on his back with a thud and a heavy weight on top of him. Ouch, are you okay? Wait, fuck, he's on top of me, I crashed into him and now he's on top of me. You yet, you, um, -um. You started going before I could tell you to wait silly, right? Sorry. He could feel Deku's breath on his face, and the way his thighs were wrapped snug round his hips on the ground, Bakugo's insides were malfunctioning. Having no vision heightened every other sense, and he was in such a state of shock that he couldn't even move his arms up to pull his blindfold off. So he wasn't sure if he was grateful when Deku reached up to pull the material off his eyes, or if finally seeing the boy on top of him made it so, so much worse. Ah, there are those pretty eyes. Hmm, you like my eyes? I totally never knew that. He teased and relished in the way Deku's expression faltered and his cheeks flushed pink. Did that give it away? Maybe, it was worth it for that look on his face. Fuck I wanna kiss him right now. He hasn't made a move to get off me. I don't want him to. Thanks for not getting me killed. You're welcome, not that you would have died, you're so dramatic. Maybe a little but it's more fun to imagine it really was like an action spy movie. You made a great secret agent. And you made a great guy in the chair. They stayed there, so obviously flirting with one another without outright admitting how they felt, smiling playfully and ignoring the world around them. Until a loud yell utterly burst their bubble of bliss. Hey hey everyone, your lazy teacher doesn't wanna go get you all himself so I'm here to call you back when you finish your task. Yeesh, um. We should head back. Yeah, um hmm. Deku clambered off of Bakugo and they made their way back to the rest of their class in a shy silence, though both of them were internally screaming over how fun the moment they shared was. Patience Katsuki, this time tomorrow you'll be totally making out, this is for his sake, for the tradition he worked hard to make special? Shit, I can't do this. As soon as school finished Bakugo had snuck out the dorms and rushed to the local mall, hoping he would be able to just buy as much chocolate as possible in preparation for tomorrow. But now that he was stood outside the chocolate stores, he was reading all the descriptions in utter confusion. What's the difference? Why are there so many types? I don't even know what he likes. Bakugo? Shit. What the fuck are you doing here? That's my line? Damn it yeah I guess you're here for Dunn's face huh? Well, yeah, I know it might be a lot to get used to, your friends dating each other, but I really like him. Cha, don't be ridiculous, I don't have a problem with you dating, it's better than you both going off to get girlfriends or some shit. Really? You, you don't care? Of course I care. I, I'm happy for you dumbass. He looked away in embarrassment, hating how awkward he felt just being honest with his best friend, but after just a moment he was wrapped in a hug and immediately panicked. Get off man you're getting way too ahead of yourself? I said one nice thing that does not mean I'm suddenly a hug person. I got one in though, I appreciate your support dude. It's whatever. Oh my god I got so caught up with myself you almost got away with avoiding why you're here? Sigh. You wanna get chocolates in return for your anonymous gift? Well, it's not really anonymous anymore. You figured it out? Um hmm, and after he put in so much work to write me all those notes, even though I don't give a shit about this holiday, he does, so. That's so cute. Come on man shut up, don't make it sound gross. Why are you stood out here anyway if you wanna buy chocolate, you have to actually go into the store you know. Well I don't know what to get, there's so many options. We can pick together then? Come on. Bakugo sighed but trudged after Kirishima into the store, only getting more overwhelmed by the seemingly unending walls of chocolates. Midoriya likes ultra sweet stuff right? 
He'd love caramel chocolates, I'm sure. I mean, I guess, but wait, how did you? Oh, I mean, I just assume that if you figured out who it was and actually do reciprocate their feelings, then it has to be Midoriya, right? I'm not that obvious. Maybe not to everyone else, but I know you. You're annoying. All right, I guess I'll leave you to pick your own chocolates then. You wouldn't dare. No, I wouldn't. So come on. The next morning was finally white day, and the moment Bakugo woke up, he rushed to eat his last Valentine's chocolate and read the note. If you've figured out who I am and you accept my feelings, then I'll be waiting at the cherry blossom tree outside the dorms for you. Oh my God, this is it. He's waiting for me. I can tell him how I feel. He showered and dressed as fast as he could. Way too antsy to get to that damned tree. And when he was finally ready, he raced there with all his bags of chocolate in hand. But as he reached the tree, he slowed down and frowned in confusion. Nobody was there. Um, maybe I got here faster than him. Just as he was contemplating heading back into the dorms, he heard some movement from behind the tree and immediately broke into an endearing smile, exhaling a laugh. I know you're there, Izuku. He heard the boy gasp softly and then the slow reveal of his wavy green hair peering round the trunk, until their eyes met and Bakugo realized he was starting to cry. Hey what's wrong? Why are you crying? You're really here? You read the note properly right? You know what being here means? Of course stupid. He rolled his eyes with a smile, holding out the bags filled with chocolate, but he only cried harder, racing toward Bakugo to dive into a hug. Wah, um. He froze and dropped the bags in shock, feeling his heart race in his chest as Deku buried his face against him. I love you Kachan. The second the words left his mouth Bakugo practically melted, wrapping his arms around the shorter boy and closing his eyes to soak in the moment. Stop crying. I can't. I'm in shock Kachan is this real life? Yes, you're wrapped in my big strong arms right now isn't this what you wanted? I'll die if you keep referencing those notes. Hey, look at me. Deku tensed in his arms for a moment before gulping and pulling back to look up into his eyes. You're so beautiful. Ka-chan? Hey I'm mad at you though you know. Huh, wha why? Why'd you do all this shit anonymously? You made my brain work for a whole month trying to figure it out? I'm sorry? I was terrified. I know you hate Valentine's Day so I figured if I just gave you an ordinary confession it wouldn't mean anything to you. Cha, I only say I hate it because nobody ever gave me anything before. Hey that's not true. Girls in elementary and middle school gave you gifts every year. You just always blew them up and told them to go away. Well that didn't count. Who wants shit from girls I don't like girls. You knew you were gay for that long? I dunno, I just, never liked anyone really, until you. Oh, ahem, if it makes you feel any better I never got anything at all, not even from girls. Oh hey but look, I got you all this stuff and you didn't even look at it? Sorry? I was just so shocked and excited, you really reciprocate my feelings? Yes? Now sit and eat some of this chocolate, look try the caramel ones they have like special white chocolate sauce or something I dunno. He held Deku's hand and excitedly pulled him to sit together under the tree, getting out a variety of chocolate boxes and handing them to the flustered freckled boy. You're so cute. Huh, Sue stop that? I've had enough of your compliments all month. Hearing them actually come out of your mouth is, a lot. I'm happy that the way I feel about you makes you feel good. Of course it does, you're always praising me for everything. I don't understand why you like me so much. Well I tried to explain it in 30 notes but I can keep going if you'd like. No? Here eat this. He huffed with red cheeks before bringing a chocolate up to Deku's mouth. The boy looked at it and then back up into his eyes, parting his lips and letting Bakugo feed it to him. As his lips wrapped around the chocolate they brushed against Bakugo's thumb and the boy's heart starting thumping in his chest, eyes glued to the pretty boy before him as his finger tingled. Hmm, it's nice. Holy fuck what was that? His lips are so soft. Can I kiss you? Wha what? If it's too soon that's fine I just um. Please do. Bakugo blinked and gulped as Deku turned to face him fully, his hands nervously clasped in his lap as his wide eyes glistened with excitement. Okay. He couldn't hold back his own shy smile as they leant closer, bringing his hand up to brush into the back of Deku's hair and gently guide his head forward, until their lips met. It was so soft and delicate, their lips brushing together as Deku's hands reached up to wrap over Bakugo's shoulders. They kissed like they were the only people in the world, savoring the precious moment as their tongues tentatively explored the other's mouth. It soon became breathless, Bakugo frantically pulling him closer with a hand on his waist until they parted 
Deku burying his face in the crook of his neck as they panted hotly. Oh my god. Holy shit. You're amazing. That was amazing. Incredible. I wish we didn't need oxygen I could do that forever. Pfft. I mean, I won't pretend I don't feel the same way. Woo congrats gaze. Eh? Uh, that was hot. You guys? What are you doing? The two boys flushed red as they looked up at their dorm building, to see a bunch of their classmates leaning out a window and hollering in excitement. Congrats on your relationship? Join the club? Kami called triumphantly before turning to plant a kiss to Kirishima's cheek, making Bakugo roll his eyes and stand up, holding out his hands for Deku. I can't believe you perverts were spying on us, sorry? We knew about Deku's plans so we were just looking out for him? I wish you'd have told me. Come on, let's go inside away from those freaks. He pulled Deku into the dorms as the boy frantically grasped all the bags of chocolate with him. Wait where are we going? Your dorm. Oh. The blonde boy hurried to Deku's room, ignoring anyone they passed along the way, tugging him through the door and right onto his bed. Hey Ka-chan. Hmm? How long have you liked me? Um, maybe a year or so. Probably longer, I just didn't realize it back then. Really? Well there wasn't really like one sudden thing that made me feel this way, it was a slow build up of all the anger and jealousy from hating how you were getting ahead of me, but then all that frustration somehow turned into admiration, which still annoyed me, part of me still hates that I can't catch up to you, but more of me just thinks you're incredible. He shyly looked back to Deku and the boy was already staring into his soul with literal hearts in his eyes, until he dived onto him and knocked him onto his back. Whoa. Hey I still don't really know if I'm a hug person you know. Well you're gonna have to get used to it cause I won't be able to stop. He mumbled into his neck and Bakugo laughed breathily. Wrapping his arms round his back and closing his eyes, feeling their heartbeats practically sink up as their chests were pressed together. He was lying there peacefully, soaking in the blissful moment, until he felt Deku press his soft lips against his neck, and it sent shivers down his spine. Deku didn't stop continuously pressing gentle kisses up his neck toward his jaw, nibbling in a few places and feeling their hearts simultaneously pick up speed as Bakugo hummed softly. Hmm that feels nice. He kissed a little more before pulling back to look into Bakugo's eyes, which had this glint of mischievous excitement. You don't know how badly I've wanted to kiss you, so many times, and yesterday when you were on top of me like this, I almost broke, but I held out for you, and this dumb tradition. Well I appreciate that. Though I wouldn't have been mad, I mean I would have loved to kiss you all those times you wanted to. Hmm I guess we'll just have to make up for all those missed opportunities hmm? Deku's cheeks went pink as Bakugo reached up, cupping his jaw and leaning up to connect their lips. There was barely any hesitation this time, their tongues lapped together and lips smacked hotly, they were desperate to explore every inch of one another. He tastes sweet, it's addicting, feeling his body on top of me, so muscular yet soft, He's warm but it's so comfortable, so perfect. He subconsciously bit down on Deku's lower lip gently, tugging it back before littering kisses down his jaw to his neck, making the boy gasp out a shuddered breath. Bakugo couldn't help himself, sucking and biting the pure smooth skin between his teeth, listening to the shy sounds escaping Deku's lips. The air in the room was getting heavy and their breaths were getting shallower with heady anticipation, until Deku pulled on Bakugo's hair gently and tapped his shoulder. Wait Kachan. He detached his mouth from Deku's neck immediately, cupping his face and scanning his features worriedly for discomfort. Are you alright? Hmm, yeah, I just. Too fast? A little, I want to do, more, so badly? But isn't it too fast? We only just realized we feel the same. Um hmm, you're right. Kissing you is just so good I almost forgot this was real life. Pfft, it is very nice. He pecked his lips softly before lying his head down on his chest and sighing blissfully. Thank you for understanding Ka-chan. Of course. He leant down to press a kiss atop his head and rubbed his back soothingly. I love you. Hmm, love you too. He felt Deku tense suddenly before peeking up at him with wide shocked eyes. You love me? Huh, of course I do. But you didn't say it earlier? I thought maybe you just needed more time to feel that strongly. What? Are you sure I didn't? I thought I did. I would remember you telling me you loved me? Well I'm sorry I really thought I did. I do love you and I was supposed to say it at the stupid tree? He buried his face in his hands in embarrassment and Deku laughed sweetly, holding his wrists to pull his hands away. I can't get over how cute you are. You're crazy? I'm just stupid. Nah, cutie. Shut up. Should we go on our first date today? 
Oh, that would be nice, did you have something in mind? Well, since Kirishima confessed back to Kaminari today, how about we plan something with them? And Todoroki and Sirokun too? Really? You wanna go out with all of them? Oh come on it'll be fun, all of us are new couples and great friends, we should at least ask. I shall right don't look at me like that, you can ask though, and I'll stand there making it very clear I'm not happy about it. I would never expect anything different. He hopped off of Bakugo and pulled him off the bed as he whined in disappointment. You're not allowed chairs anymore. Huh? Why? Me, I'm your chair. Who knew you would be clingy? I'm not clingy, it's just nice, you're like a weighted blanket, feels cozy, shut up and go you're embarrassing me. I didn't say anything, I think it's sweet. Bakugo only scoffed and nudged Deku toward the door, following in silence as they went to find their other gay friends. Kaminari-kun? Oh hey, I'm surprised you got him to leave the room once you were in there. Cha, I'm not gross like you. Tell that to the hickey on Deku's neck. Eh? You're lucky I didn't get this one in my dorm yet, you won't see us for days once I do. You're going to kill me. Ahem, in other news, we're here to ask you on a date. Eh? Midoriya you're cute but I literally just got Kirishima to admit he's into me. No dumbass like a double date, you two join us on our date. Oh, that's cute? I wanna ask Todoroki to join us too. Oh, he's with Siro, they literally just left we could probably catch up? The group rushed out the dorms to race after the couple who were holding hands on a cute little walk. Oi Siro? Huh. Will you join our double date? That sounds nice, we were about to go get lunch, wanna join us? Sure, right? I could eat. Yeah whatever. Do you never get bored of soba love? How could I possibly ever get bored of something so perfect? The way you eat it is so wrong, it looks so bland. Where's the flavor, the spice? Everyone's taste buds are different Bakugo, even though I strive to be as manly as possible, I can't handle the amount of spice you like. You're manly in so many other ways babe. I do not wanna hear about it. Are you enjoying your food Kachan? Um hmm. Wanna try it? Midoriya, I fear it will completely burn your mouth. It can't be that bad. Kachan is eating it like soup, no problems at all. You clearly don't know your boyfriend very well. Uh -huh. Of course he does. What's that supposed to mean? If it were super ultra spicy he would at least be sweating a little. Exactly? Isuka knows me better than any of you. I'm sure soon he'll know you even better than your own parents, if you know what I mean. We're eating Kami. You really had to put that thought in my brain? I'm just preparing you for later, his room is right beside yours you know, you might have to stay with me for a while. You don't have to worry about that? Not that it's any of your business. You and Bakugo don't plan on having sex, love? Maybe um, that's not something to talk about at lunch. I told you this date would have been better with just the two of us. Bakugo pouted and sulked in his seat, making Deku reach over to hold his hand with an apologetic smile. I know you prefer having less people around but I really do think all of us being together like this is nice. Try to enjoy it, he pleaded, turning to press a kiss to his boyfriend's cheek and squeeze his hand comfortingly. Yeah alright, sorry. He turned to kiss Deku's head before taking a sip of his drink, accidentally making eye contact with Todoroki and realizing the boy was staring at him with a frown. He watched in confusion as Todoroki pouted and turned to Siro, holding his hand atop the table and leaning close to peck his cheek. Hmm? Oh, thanks love. Siro pulled his hand up to kiss his knuckles and they both smiled with rosy cheeks, until Kaminari cleared his throat. Now hold on a minute I see what's going on here. What's up babe? They're having a gay off? Why is everyone else showing more PDA than me that's just not right? He huffed before grabbing his boyfriend and tugging him forward to kiss him right on the lips. Kirishima's eyes widened immediately and he gripped Kami's hands tightly. You guys, we're supposed to just be having a nice lunch. If this is suddenly a competition there's no way you two would win anyway. Hanta and I have been dating longer so obviously we win. Well me and Isuka have known each other longer, and we've clearly been in love for years. Yay and you never even confessed. I did, today. Kachan it's fine, we don't need to prove ourselves for anything, we know how we feel. Um hmm. So we win, right Hanta? Shoto I think you're being just, maybe a tiny bit childish. Shook. I love you very much but there's no reason to turn our relationship into a competition with our friends. All three of you are being a little crazy. He started it? No you started it. I saw how you were looking at us, it's not my fault you're jealous. You're jealous? 
I just wanted you to kiss me, oh love, I'm sorry I didn't realize, I thought you'd be shy with affection in public. I am, but, I also don't want to be, I want to just be comfortable loving you wherever. Yeesh this is painful, ouch. Deku pinched Bakugo's thigh under the table and frowned up at him. Don't ruin their moment. Why can't we have our own moment, if we weren't on a dumb triple date we'd be making out right now, I wanna kiss you. You're still allowed to kiss me? With zero hesitation Bakugo turned and cupped Deku's chin, pulling him forward to kiss him, and not let go. The rest of the guys gawked at them as Bakugo practically devoured the freckled boy who was almost limp in his arms, getting completely lost in the feeling of Bakugo's intoxicating kisses. Um. The moment they heard the unfamiliar voice they shot apart, Deku shoving Bakugo away and wiping his mouth with bright red cheeks. Sorry? I was just coming to clear the empty plates, I, um, sorry. The waiter grabbed all their plates and bowls before hurrying away, leaving the two boys awkwardly blushing in silence. Bahaha you two are so embarrassed? Shut up. God we're all embarrassing. Agreed. Later that evening Bakugo had invited, practically forced, Deku to come to his room. He was tired of being around so many people and desperately wanted his new boyfriend all to himself. Sorry for spending so much time with everyone today, I appreciate you doing that for me. Cha, as long as you had a good day. Hee <laughs> hee, of course, and I'll make it up to you I promise. Woo do you want a massage? I'm pretty good at those you know, are you sure? You don't have to do anything? I want to. I know that being around people all day must have stressed you out, I'll help you relax come on. Bakugo could feel himself blushing but despite being a little shy about it, he was extremely excited at the thought of getting a massage. It'll be easier if you take your shirt off. Just for the massage hmm? I'm not going to let you embarrass me, it will make the massage better, but it's also a bonus to see you shirtless. Bakugo did as he was asked, pulling the material over his head with a playful grin, enjoying the way Deku's eyes scanned over his muscular body as though mentally devouring him. Oh okay, um, if you lie down on your stomach I'll get started. Sure babe. Filled with confidence, Bakugo reached out to pull Deku's chin up for a kiss, not missing the way the boy almost fell forward as he pulled back to lie down. He heard Deku clear his throat, and then felt his weight settle as he sat himself on Bakugo's thighs bringing his hands up to press into his back. Hmm that's nice, you are good at this. He let himself completely relax, feeling his own muscles loosen as Deku worked some sort of magic, grunting every so often if any were especially tight. After a while he noticed how utterly silent Deku was, and he frowned a little in concern. Are you alright? Hmm? Uh, yes. Why wouldn't I be? You're just really quiet, you don't have to keep going, it already feels much better. It's fine, I'm um enjoying it too. What? how are you enjoying it you're just, oh, he just likes, touching me, or I guess, he's a people pleaser it's probably just the usual enjoyment he gets out of helping people. You're so hot Kachan. Ah, maybe not. You think? Um, mm, your bare skin is so warm and smooth, and every time I loosen a muscle the sounds you make are so, my need to clear my head or something. Why? What's wrong with thinking that way about me? We're dating now love. Uh, but it still feels wrong for my mind to so blatantly sexualize a situation like this, I was just supposed to be helping you relax, and you did, very much so, but you know how I feel about having you sat on top of me, we're both feeling the same way, Isuka. Bakugo rolled over with Deku still on his thighs, hoisting him higher up on his waist and reaching down to hold his hands. There's no shame in wanting these things, though if you still want to go slow, just tell me. The blonde boy looked up to him with reassurance in his eyes, cut this out now, before slowly bringing his hands up to place them on his bare chest. I, I want. Take your time, I'm perfectly fine with going slow. The freckled boy looked down at him with rosy cheeks, his breathing getting a little frantic as his eyes flicked from his face to his body over and over. You know what? Screw going slow, I've been waiting years for this. Wa wait, is Suku, the end, or is it? There will be a link in the description taking you to AO3 where you can read a bonus smut scene, since I can no longer post smut cuts on Wattpad after they deleted my work. Obviously if you don't want to read that stuff then that's fine, the story ends here. But for you nasty folks who want the spicy stuff, I say that with love I am one of you, then I hope you enjoy it. I also hope you enjoyed the video, it's currently Thursday while I write this and I want the video to be up tomorrow, but I haven't written the smut yet 
So I guess if you're seeing this at usual time on Friday then I really speed ran that smut. Thank you all for watching. Love you. Thank <laughs> you.